Good evening. Matt, are we okay? All right, good evening. Uh, thank you to those of you who joined us live tonight for our conversation with Durham School Services. Thank you to the folks who are watching this at home uh, as it's being live streamed. Tonight, we have representatives from Durham School Services with us to speak with our community. We have Mr. Robert Scarpa, Mr. John Ziegler, Mr. E Mr. Edward Flavin, and Mr. Michael Chiasone. So I'd like to welcome our friends from Durham School Services. The goal of this session tonight is to acknowledge the issues that have impacted our schools by way of transportation, to understand the problems and address key questions and concerns from our community. What Council Rock is experiencing, what we've experienced, is some irregularities in bus service. There are questions and concerns circulating in our community that Durham is best equipped to answer. The Transportation Department from Council Rock and our administration have been working together closely to provide relief for our community. It's important for us to share with you what we know in a timely manner and to share with you everything we know so that we're transparent. What we have done as a district to be proactive before the school year began, we set up a call center so that parents would have a live person to speak to and work directly with our transportation department. Since Monday of this week, we have employed two people, one to go to each bus terminal, one at the Wrightstown bus terminal and one at the Newtown bus terminal, so we could provide real-time updates to our community by way of posting it on our website and posting it through our Blackboard communication app so that parents receive text if a bus is late or canceled. I'm happy to report that we have had no cancellations in the last two days. The other thing that we have done is that schools, all of our schools, all 10 elementary, two middle, and two high schools, along with our Star Center, beginning this morning, have opened one hour early in a, an attempt to alleviate pressures for families at home in the event there are interruptions in bus service. We have been working closely and communicating with Durham on a daily basis and to all families who have sent in questions to the dedicated email address, durham at crsd.org. Durham will answer those questions tonight that are specific to Durham and ones that are specific to transportation. Our transportation department and administration will continue to work through the emails and phone calls we're receiving. Durham will address questions that pertain to issues submitted at that email address, as I said, as well as give the audience an opportunity that's here tonight to ask questions of the representatives from Durham. As I mentioned, Council Rock will answer each question related to our transportation department by either an email or a phone call back to the families who have submitted questions to us directly um, and in addition, outside of that Durham at CRSD email address. And with that, I would like to welcome Durham and um, give Durham the floor to present to our community, answer questions, and then uh, after that, there will be an opportunity for folks here if you have questions. We have a microphone uh, off to my right. If you would just kind of come down that wall to the microphone, if you have questions or comments or suggestions, uh, Durham is here and happy to address each question tonight. So, gentlemen, thank you very much for being here. Uh, thank you, Dr. Sanko and the Council Rock School District. Um, my name is John Ziegler, and I'm the Director of Business Development for Durham School Services. Um, and I'm going to kind of start this off with a little bit of an overview. Um, and first, I would like to thank the district for the opportunity for us to meet with those in the community um, and go over some of the questions that came into the joint mailbox so we can try and answer those. I'll give you a little overview on that. But what I need to do first is um, thank everybody that works 
for Durham School Services and Services Di Council Rock School District. Everybody from our drivers to our staff, our dispatchers, our mechanics, our monitors, they all do a wonderful job and they work very hard. Um, and every one of them is given more than 100% every day. Um, so it's important to know that um, as you hear some of the numbers, the number of routes we're running, the people behind that's not me or any of the, the guys up here. We're just meeting with you to answer your questions. They're the ones who really get it done. So I want to thank them first. Um, so on to what we're here for tonight. So there was a number of emails um, that came into the Council Rock Durham School District um, email that we're going to talk about tonight. Of those emails, some of them were inquiries, some of them were complaints, some of them had a common theme. We are working on answering every one of those emails individually to that person that submitted those, right? Um, they have, we have email addresses, some people we got their phone number, but we're working to respond to those individually with individual solutions to those questions, okay? What we did is through those emails we received, there were some common threads, right? There were some common issues that more people than just one person had a one-off question we're experiencing. So we're gonna go through those and try and answer those common issues and concerns. And then as Dr. Sanko said, we're ready to answer any other questions for anybody in the audience that maybe we didn't get answered in our responses, okay? So what I'd like to start off with, one of the biggest questions was, what about the bus tracking app? Okay, the app that will be in place for a parent to track their student's bus. We had, a Durham, we had a bus tracker app at Durham School Services that we lost support um, a few weeks before the school year started. And what I mean by support is the ability to support that app and give a product that would deliver what the district uh, needs and what the parents need, it was not gonna be supported and it would not have done the job. So in the meantime, Dr. Sanko and Matt Adams and the district team was able to secure an app through the TransFinder routing software that the district uses to complete the routes. So we jumped on that. Um, we're gonna pay for that and we, we will have that app deployed by September 29th. That'll be a joint effort um, with us, with our Zonar GPS software and the TransFinder so, uh, routing software. And that was made possible through the hard work of the district. So I will tell you that is coming. It's beta testing now, and the rollout date will be September 29th. And that will be an app that's free to the parents um, that they can, and I, it's probably too deep to go into, but it, you just get an Android or an Apple phone, it's free, you download it, and what it'll do is it'll give you the ability to see where your child's bus is. So that's coming in September 29th. There were several questions about that, so hopefully that um, gives an answer for anybody concerned there. Another question that was common was, how many routes are we running? Okay, how many actual school bus routes are there for Council Rock? Currently there's 108 bus routes for Council Rock School District right now. Of those 108, 68 of those are full-size buses, which you would look at as a traditional bus. Most of them are 77 passenger buses. They're, we call those a full-size bus. There's 32 routes that are an A-type bus, which a lot of people will call a van. Um, if your child rides one of them, it would have a V number for it, V1, V2, whatever. There's 32 of those routes. There's four full-size wheelchair buses. They're not quite as big as a 77 passenger, but they're a full-size, look like a regular school bus that are, are to serve our wheelchair students. There's four of those in service. And then we have four minivan vehicles that are in service as well. Right, so they're just what it says, a minivan that uh, transports uh, smaller groups of students and specific uh, programs there. So that's the number of buses, routes, you can go either way. Um, a lot of those routes do more than one school so that if you think about it, they're tiered. So a bus, one of those routes probably, you know, does an elementary, a middle school and a high school or they're paired up in some sort of way. So there's a lot more routes, if you will, but those are the number of vehicles, if that makes sense. So I wanted to answer that question. 
Um, Bob is gonna come up and talk about our driver staffing numbers next, which was a question that was very common um, from a lot of people, how many drivers, how many do we have? Why don't we have enough? So I'm gonna turn it over to Bob um, to share that info. Thank you, John. Thanks everybody for having us here. Um, right, currently we have 110 drivers. Um, of those 110 drivers, 108 are available on a daily basis, right? We have two out on long-term leave of absence, which we do anticipate getting them back, but currently um, they are out, so we are working on getting them back to us. Um, we've got 10 monitors. Uh, now, the, the question stands, 108 drivers for 108 routes is difficult, right? Especially when you take into account we do offer and people do take time off. So we brought in, starting this week, we brought in drivers from, from outside district. Um, our plan by Monday of next week is to have nine to 10 additional drivers from outside district. Um, we brought in four yesterday, um, well actually today. They came in yesterday, but went on the road today. We have another one coming in tomorrow, so that'll give us five, and we have four additional coming in by Monday um, to, support, to support us during our recruitment phase. Um, we are recruiting, actively recruiting every single day. We, we have seen an increase to our pipeline um, and, and applicants over the last few days. So currently we've, we've got 24 people in, in our, our screening and permit phase, which is probably the biggest bucket and the most time consuming of the buckets. Um, what happens with screening and permit is new people have to go to the motor vehicle for um, you know, CDL permit. That takes a, t a period of time. There's four to five tests that they have to take to pass. So it's a process, as well as go through our vigorous background, which we, are, we do pride ourselves on, on being one of the safest companies in the industry because our background is so, is so I entailed. Um, so, so that's the, the deepest part of it. We do have two people in behind the wheel. One is scheduled for road test. We should get that one out soon. And as the people come through, um, the screening and permit, they'll go to classroom and behind the wheel, so it'll move a little bit faster once they get out of that screening and permit phase. Um, the people coming from out of town will be with us until we are staffed. So those people will, will absorb some of the impact of, of people not coming to work if they don't come to work or openings we may have. Um, so for the, for the short term future, we are covered and with our recruitment um, and our uh, flyer that we do have if anyone wants to take one with you today and if you know anyone that wants to work for us please take one with you we have 200 of them printed um, we, we do offer a very good package for a school bus driver um, for any anyone really who, who's looking for a position so so please we have these available if you're looking for uh, uh, or if you know anyone that is that is looking for work um, we're, we're definitely there for them the next topic was communication, uh, communication about late and or canceled bus routes, which I'll, I'll touch base on a little bit. I've got Michael here. Michael um, works day to day, hand in hand with the people in the office. Um, I, I'm there, I do as well, uh, but, but he's got a little bit more intimate knowledge of, of what goes on. But thanks to the district for, for supporting us with some of the communication because that was a big issue for us at the, at the onset. Um, every school startup that, that we have, um, that I have, I have 12 different regions that I cover, um, every school startup, the first two or three weeks, are usually very intense um, with route changes and, and phone calls and, and problems, um, uh, for lack of a better term, problems, because there's always some differences and, and things that have to be adjusted. So being able to communicate was difficult for us because we were getting so many in um, we were short drivers for the first week of school, um, and, and being able to communicate that out to all the parents was, was a, a very tough task. Getting it to the district in time was a tough task, um, but, but thanks to Dr. Stanko and, and, and the team, the transportation department, supporting us with that, it has improved, I hope, um, and I believe it has because I do meet with those people every day and I check on what's going on with them from my team to them so that they have the information to know that that information is getting posted to the site. Um, as, as we progress, um, the, the canceled routes, which we don't have many, um, we haven't over the last few days, which, which is a good thing, um, but, but the canceled and the late routes will 
diminish and, and hopefully we start to see less inquiries. So, um, but th that's how the communication is going. It's almost immediate. Um, people are sitting in our office now. Uh, we welcome the, the, the help and it's been a great help from the district. Uh, so so um, we, we are communicating that way. Um, as, as, routes, as routes are an issue comes up, a driver will radio in and tell dispatch I'm, I'm running 10 minutes late and they'll tell them why because that, that's important for us to be able to investigate the reason why. Is it due to uh, an issue with the route, how it's set up and, and you know, we'll work with the district on that or is it due to a traffic situation? Um, for, for instance, today we had a little bit of an issue with a traffic situation which was valid, district knew about it, they were sitting right with us. Um, we also had another issue with, with a potential breakdown but it's immediate that goes right out to, to, the, to the website for the, for the public to see and, and be able to um, know that something's going on at that point. Um, so the next topic is incorrect stops and locations. And um, I think, John, were you going to take that? So one of the other things that was pretty frequent in the inquiries received were stops specific. You know, my bus route number one, two, three, the stop is supposed to be at the corner of 1st Street and 2nd Street, but they're stopping at the corner of 3rd Street and 4th Street, just as an example, a lot of those. So that's where we collaborate with the district team. The district prepares the routes with the TransFinder system, gives us the routes, we run them, but they re require our input and that's where our drivers, as we get better at that every day, we run the route, we ask them for stop and times, which takes that route and really says, yeah, the stops are right, but the times are off. Because the routing system is a computerized system and it's, it's, it's good, um, but there's room for improvement. You know, there may be something out on the road, obviously the computer doesn't know about. So we get through the stop and times. Also, um, there's history sometimes that we don't know until we get the route where the stop is on the other side of the road, things like that. So there was a lot of inquiries about that and those route updates have been happening regularly. I see the emails daily where we're getting route changes and updating a route, then we give it to the driver so they can put it into effect the next day. So there was a lot of questions about that and that's ongoing. Um, and it, it will get less and less each day as we go, as we get through those, make the changes. Sometimes it's pairing a route. We were talking about one earlier today that just by the setup of the route where the first school, I talked earlier about the tiers, the first school route was long that it was making them late to the second tier. So what do we have to do? We have to figure out how we can better pair up those routes. So that may, may require a change to take part number two off of this route and switch it with part number two and then those routes are on time. Sometimes that stuff looks good on paper when you get your paper route, but you get out there and you actually do it, and it's, it's not nowhere near as good and as efficient as it looked on paper. So we're working through those, and that's a collaboration between us, the drivers I spoke about that do that job every day, and getting that information to the district so we can make those changes. So those are the items that were common throughout the complaints and the inquiries we got. Now there's specific ones that certainly um, we're addressing those with specific individuals and we will do that one-on-one. -on -one. Um, and at this point, um, I think we're open to any questions from the audience. Um, and I've been asked that if anybody has a question, if you can come down the side over here to the mic so that it can be um, on camera and then we'll answer any, any questions that anybody may have that we haven't addressed at this point. So we're open. Hello. So I have more of mixed questions, opinions. So my, my son hasn't been on the bus in the last four days. Thursday was canceled. Friday was canceled. Monday we get a message before his time, 10 minutes delayed. We wait there for 15 minutes after. I ended up driving to school. Today, I dropped him off at the bus at 725. At 740, 
we get a notification that it's delayed, but we don't know what's going on. I call, ask him what's going on. The lady says, we don't know either. The bus doesn't have their tracking on. Whatever that means, I'm not sure. Um, finally, 15 minutes later, he's called back and forth. The bus is coming 40 minutes late. If you, know, if you guys implemented people to stay at the depots to give us real-time tracking, why do we not know this before the time slot? Why are you telling us after the fact? Like, why, why do we get notified at 7.40 that the bus missed its 7.30 stop? We should have known that at 7.15 in the morning. But we didn't. <laughs> a absolutely. And, and again, we started this process yesterday with having um, a district person with us. So when our dispatcher, something happens, and, and I don't know, I'll get your information when, when we're done here, and we'll get your specific bus and stop so we can get an answer to you about your specific bus. Um, and without that, I, and I, even if you told me bus five right now, I may not know, I don't have that information no, with it. me. Sure. But it could be anything from a, a, a traffic issue, a, a stop, another stop was delayed. Yeah, um, 40 minutes? I, I'm not making like any excuses. An 40, min 40 minutes is unacceptable, 100% unacceptable. Um, but that's what we're working on, trying to be able to do is if something happens in route, right, that we can get that information out there quicker. Because quite frankly, the way it works every morning is, tonight, before we go home, we will set up tomorrow morning, right? We will look at it and say, okay, the driver of bus three is out tomorrow because they have a doctor's appointment, or who knows what. So we know tomorrow morning, before we come into work, we set it up tonight and we say, we are covering bus route three with this standby driver, okay? We plan that tonight. We come in in the morning and hopefully in a good day, nothing's changed from when those dispatchers went home at night. But quite frankly, somebody got a flat tire, child sick, whatever. So then we make those adjustments in the morning and that's when we do as well as we can with all the drivers we have. And then that's when it may start to become more of a problem if we use up all of our backup standby drivers, right? That's where you, we got to do a better job of delivering that information to your parents. And I think it will only get better every day on two fronts. We're gonna get better at how we communicate and do it quicker. And secondly, we're gonna keep hiring drivers and getting drivers in here. So we have more what we call standby drivers to fill those last minute issues. But we'll get your information searched specifically okay. So we can get you a call and see what's going on with your child's bus. Also, it seems like it's the same families, the same buses that are constantly late are being delayed. It's like the same road. Why is it if one day the bus doesn't get there, put a different driver on, have a different row of buses, let them drive their kids to school. You know, why do I have to drive my kids to school five days in a row? When I have an elementary school kid that my, my wife can't leave because she has to stay there, I have to open my business at eight for me to open it at eight, I have to leave the house at 7.20. You know, these buses, the way it's just a nightmare, it's becoming a nightmare, I'm be honest with you. It's horrible. Why can't we put a different driver on and let a different route miss that day? Let their parents drive them to school. Why is it the same route getting missed four days in a row? Well, I, I can tell you, A, that's what we're working to alleviate by bringing in extra drivers from outside of Council Rock to, to give us that extra and to cover those routes that I and I don't know and we'll find out when we get your yeah. route it, it's it's very possible that your children's route is what is an open route no driver has bid to drive that route so it's it, it doesn't have a, a, a regularly assigned or bid driver on that route but I don't know but we're gonna find out and we're gonna help solve your problem okay. if you give us a minute afterwards, we'll get your specific information. I can tell you the bus route now, what number okay. it is at least. Okay. 64 for Holland Middle. 64. In the morning, yeah. Okay. That's the morning one, so we. And, and we'll get we'll get a phone number and email that we can get back to you when we get re resolution. Okay. Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, love the turnout of all the parents here. What do we got? Three, four. I've been in this district over 50 years, served this district for over 50 years. I'm kind of shocked that everybody's complaining, but this is all we got, one or two, three, four guys. The rest are drivers, and they're here to, protect, to, to actually defend themselves. 
let's, let's say it this way. To do the same thing over and over again and not get the results, that's like a height of stupidity. My thing is, what you gotta do is, this whole city, you're telling me, and he doesn't realize that your system is down. So he can't find out what's going on. That's number one. So you're gonna correct that by the 29th, I understand, and that's good. But what you gotta do with this system, okay? What you gotta do with this system is, aside from taking, what's the common sense is this. You're putting too many people on a bus and the train's leaving the station. If it leaves the station late, it goes all the way from the front to the end. So what you gotta do is, and I understand with the supply chain, with your buses, with your drivers, you don't have enough. And that's the problem. So you're trying to consolidate all this stuff together. And you take that into consideration, yeah, there's traffic, there's weather, there's kids that come out late. So if that kid comes out late on the middle school, by the time you get to the elementary, you're late. The same thing happens in the afternoon. What you gotta do with the system is we gotta get back into the New Year's. Maybe you should have something with GPS. You're saying, well, traffic. If you had a system, and Council Rock's still working on their computer system, maybe you had a computer system, and the last time I touched a computer was when they had Fortran. So I'm an old guy, all right? What you gotta do is say, well, we see this is gonna happen. There's gonna be a, a traffic jam. You got a great radio system in your, in your buses now. So you should make immediately on the spot say, listen, don't go down Bristol Road. Go this way or go that way. And the computer should be, I think I'm losing this here. And the computer will take care of that if you have a good enough computer. If you have a good enough system. I understand Blackboard, but if Blackboard's not up, this poor guy here is standing on the corner for four hours and he's getting late to work along with many of the other parents, which are not here, surprisingly, okay? Just another suggestion too, I hear on that, see, I, I'm not with the drivers. I, I'm actually working on the bus for Council Rock as a monitor. And what I hear is, well, so-and-so's missing. Now my son, he moved out, like, the system did him good, he became a doctor, he was at Council Rock, and he did good, okay? But now he's up at Glen Mills, he's got Garnet Valley, you know what those kids do? They all have fobs, so when they get on that bus, you're gonna know right away that that kid's on that bus. And when he gets off the bus, you know he's right away on that bus. And the parents can locate that kid through that fob. We don't have that. There's a lot of things that the system needs. Council Rock. It went from 20, and I'm not even gonna talk about the past superintendent, it went from 20 to 30 in the ratings of schools. It's time to update. You can't, everybody tries to blame the drivers. Don't blame the drivers. The drivers, most of these drivers, I don't say probably all of them, maybe it'd be one or two, they're very conscientious, and they try their best, and the stress of all of a sudden they're hitting a traffic jam, and they know the kids are screaming on the bus, and the parents are screaming at them, it's not their fault. It's that system. You can't put, you can't put 10 pounds of poop in a five pound bag. So you gotta get your stuff together with more buses, okay, more drivers, and a better thing of, of, of putting this together so everybody knows where they're going. And your best bet would be, if anything, when you put these routes together, maybe you should talk to these people that got 40 or 30 years in the business that know what's going on, all right? They know what's going on. That would be, I would say, you surround yourself, and I, I ran million dollar jobs I'm like before I got in here as an electrician, all right? You surround yourself with good people, but that, that's, that's not only it. You can have good people, but if your plan sucks, you know, it's not gonna come out the way you hope it comes out. So get your plan together, that's all I say. Thank you, and I understand your points. And, and as we talked about at the beginning, we know the drivers are the force behind this, right? And, and we're working daily with the routers and our staff to improve those routes and our systems um, there's a lot of growth in the systems we have as far as GPS, the bus trackers, tracking and so on that will grow. It's still um, evolving uh, technology, if you will. So I appreciate the comments. Next. Hi. Hi. So I am a, a parent of a student here. And the um, first question I have is, is there gonna be any type of re uh, real time tracking available at some point? Uh, last year we had an application, at least I could see where the bus is and know where my son is. 
Uh, right now, it's uh, completely, I, I have no clue where he is, if something happened, if bus broke down, I have no idea, and I have no way of finding out. I try calling, and the transportation tells me um, I can't connect to the driver. Okay, she can connect to the driver, but what am I to do at that point? So, I, the bus tracking app will be deployed on September 29th. So, starting September 29th, we will have that app that you can download on your phone for free that will allow you to track your student's bus. That will be um, okay. available beginning That leads beginning to my next question. Is it going to be uh, reliable because uh, right now, um, like the bus was late, actually the bus never showed up, and uh, then uh, 40 minutes after my son left the house, a neighbor took him, uh, he, uh, so he left, and I get 40 minutes later, I get a text message saying that the bus will be late. You know, at that point, I, it really doesn't matter. You, you didn't have to bother sending me that notification because it's been 40 minutes since he left, not even since the bus time. So it was probably an hour after the bus arrival, supposedly. Well, and as, as I said, that's unacceptable on our part, and that's what a lot of what we've talked about tonight is us striving to make that not an occurrence anymore, right? Hiring more drivers. So how, what are you going to do? Like, what are you? Well, what, what, what steps are you going to take to fix that? Well, the, the big, the big, the biggest thing we need to do is keep hiring drivers, right? We have the buses, we have the routes. We need to get more drivers, and and we did do that this week. Um, we were able to get some drivers from other facilities to come here and work in Council Rock. In in, in the meantime while we are working to hire more drivers. We have 24 applicants in our pipeline, right? Now, that could be anything from somebody who's had their first interview all the way up to we have uh, one driver ready to test for their final CDL test in the upcoming week. We have another driver behind that that's in the behind the wheel. We have them in all different pipe phases of the pipeline. Um, that's the answer to have plenty of drivers and to make the routes better which we're doing every day um, that that's what action we're taking and this week while we're still staffing up we started with the district personnel at our dispatch office to communicate to get those messages out more real time if something happens on the route that makes the bus late so our, our, we're here to deliver improvement and that's what we're working on and uh, another thing is that the buses sometimes do not stop i it happened to my son this morning and uh, actually no this morning it happened to a friend of ours my son it happened monday the bus didn't stop it passed by they were standing there waiting for the bus didn't stop well we can get your route information in your school and we'll take a look and see talk to the driver and make sure we understand the stop. Yeah, it's not uh, bus 64 in the morning. 64 in the morning. Okay. Yes, ma'am. And also the big confusion arises from the bus number because uh, since we have bus 64, but the number never said 64. It says something else. So there is no way for us to really know if a bus passed by because it's not our bus or uh, because it's uh, bus 64 that didn't stop. Is there anything can be done about kind of having the numbers in order so we at least we can see what it is? So, so what we're working on there is, A, that's where we talk about sometimes if we have to have another driver help. But what that driver should be doing, and we'll make a note, they need to put a sign in their bus. If bus five is helping with bus 64, and picking up those stops, we need to get a sign in the window that says bus 64, so you can see that it's there. Mm -hmm. and, and please make it something that we can actually see from the bus stop. Yep, because otherwise absolutely, that, that's, that's, that should be an easy fix for us, and that's a good note. We'll take that back with us tonight. All right, thank you. Yes, ma'am. Well, good evening. Yes, sir. Um, so, um, I think I have uh, a comment first and then a question, right? Um, last two years, the pandemic has taught us a thing or two, right? Uh, being a technologist, I see a lot of companies thinking outside the box, thinking ahead, leveraging technology to make their processes better. What you described 
um, the bus tracking app and the technology behind it, the mapping, the routing, and all that stuff. That's 10 years ago, right? People did that 10 years ago. You look, you look at NJ Transit, you look at MTA, they do it day in and day out. So somebody made a comment that, you, you know, reach out to folks who have, who have done it before, who do it every day, and who, who know, you know, that know how to do it. I think that, y you know, that would be one thing. My question is that, again, learning from the pandemic, when the buses didn't show up, we knew the reasons, fine. The driver was sick, somebody had COVID, whatever the case might be, there was an accident, understood. Now, it's becoming a little hard to comprehend, right? I'll give you one example. Um, last, cup, last week, my s we waited at the bus stop. Uh, my son waited at the bus stop. His, t uh, his pickup time was 7.03. Uh, I dropped him off at 7 o'clock. He waited, called me at 7.20 saying, hey, I'm still at the bus stop. It didn't show up. Like, what happened? So I called the depot. I'm like, the bus never showed up. So we found out that the bus was there before and they had left five minutes before the scheduled time. And what I learned, I didn't know that, that they have a five minute buffer that they can leave late or early in that five minutes, right? Yeah, I mean, that's what I was told. I said, okay, fine. So we ended up dropping him, driving him to school, but it's not a problem. The thing is that what are you doing as an organization to be ahead of the curve, leveraging technology and thinking ahead because you're d y we're talking about challenges that were yesterday. You are talking, you're looking at issues which are coming up today, not anticipating what might happen tomorrow. You have the technology to implement or look into to be that forward thinking and have a system in place that would work for you for months and years to come. So as an organization, what are you doing to think outside the box and think ahead? That's well, my question. I, I can answer that, I, I think. So let's go back to the pandemic part of it and the impact it's had on our workforce, right? So a lot of bus drivers over the years were traditionally from certain demographics. And when the pandemic hit, um, a lot of those same people that drive buses have decided they're not going to come back to the workforce. And I respect that and we understand that. So we've started to try and think outside the box on how do we attract other groups or other demographics of people. We have a great compensation package of starting pay. We offer a Blue Cross Blue Shield healthcare plan, a PPO, um, 10 or 11 paid holidays, 10 sick days, um, 401k. So we've transitioned ourselves to traditionally um, a, a bus driver job may have been, you know, we guarantee five hours a day, maybe have been two to three, maybe four hours a day at less pay. So we're trying to get to supplement the great drivers, because I see some of them here that have been doing it forever and are still doing it and do a great job every day. We're looking to get new people into the business. So to the driver point, that's our focus there. As far as the technology goes, we have a system called Byte Curve. Um, and it, it's a transportation software, if you will, that teams up with our Zonar. Um, and these are companies you can look online. The Byte Curve is a dispatch program that gets a schedule for every driver. They swipe in. We know they're on the, on the route. And it just real time updates in our system. So as long as that driver swipes in and gets on their bus, it's updated, and we know Bob's on his bus one, he's on time. We just follow him through that way. Zonar is our pre-trip and GPS part of our system, right? Where a driver can do an electronic pre-trip and then it has GPS that we can track that bus as they go through the community. The third piece of it will be the bus tracking app. Now this year, we're going to use a TransFinder bus tracking app for the school year because we needed to get something to the community right away. In summer school time, we will roll out a bus zone app that works with that zone R GPS and ties in with all of our systems. And again, that's the latest up to date type of bus tracking app there is. Zone R has been in the business for 20 plus years and has developed through them. Um, and, and we continue to move forward on our technology. So we have I drive cam that. on our buses from a safety aspect that helps uh, improve driver performance, 
and it gives us a view outside and inside the bus if there's an accident. Um, it, do, it does a lot of great things. So our, our technology is constantly improving. But the nuts and bolts of it is what you said earlier about a driver leaving five minutes before the stop time. That shouldn't happen. I think the standard is that we ask a student to be at the bus stop maybe 10 minutes early, okay? But that doesn't mean we should leave early. Well, I was told that there's a buffer of five minutes and the driver decides if they want to stay late or leave early. I guess I'm okay with it. That's yeah, not a problem. I, I don't believe that's true. Um, but it, we'll dig into it. I, I, you know, bus stop time, you should never leave early, okay? okay. But, but we do ask the students to be there early. Th that, is, that is a true statement. But we shouldn't be leaving early. So, and you know, again, and this is just a comment. As a technologist, I can tell you that you as a company, you can challenge the technology companies, the, the GPS software company, whatever. If they tell you the deployment time frame is six weeks, you can challenge that. You can say, no, it's not acceptable. We want it done in two weeks. So you can accelerate that process. All I'm saying is that I understand your timelines and your deployment timelines, but you as an organization, you can go in and, and, and you can challenge those things. It's just yes, a sir. comment. Sir, thank you. So I'm going to take this a little bit differently. My name's Kevin Campbell, and my daughter is, uh, goes to Sol, uh, Council Rock North. So I'm going to preface this by saying, be careful of what you, you bite off, maybe more than you can chew. And my grandmother told me that a long time ago. So I've listened to all the meetings that you had with the administration, and I heard a lot of sales pitches. This was a massive contract. We told you straight up. We expected communication, drivers, and the app. By my score, you're in the hole zero to three. First impressions mean a lot to this community. And if you didn't get that throughout all the meetings, then maybe we didn't do our homework with who we chose. And that still could be up for debate. I see all reactionary things from Dr. Sanko's team and his people. I see very little but excuses, and we're going to look into it. Of the four people standing in front of me today, how many have their CDL license and are willing to get on a bus and fix this? None of you? Amazing. I'm a senior project manager. My job when this, when this stuff goes south is to get in the hole and fix it. I don't see that from you. We are spending a lot of money at our expense putting people in your office. What do you plan to give back to the district? How much capital are you going to give us back? Or were we better off with the first company? Maybe we were, maybe we weren't. But as a company, you are coming out of the gate, probably execution-wise, with all the programs that I run, seriously in the hole. So I think you need to take a, a deep dive into that. You have a lot of parents that are not here tonight for various reasons. They're at student sports, that's where I came from tonight, that couldn't be here. But this is a special place. And if that sign doesn't mean anything to you, then you should talk to the, the supervisors about when your exit strategy is, because that's what it's all about. Reaction doesn't mean anything. You have to be ahead of it, and you're way behind the time right now. And these people, these, these parents, should not be texting people at 10 o'clock at night that their, their kids didn't get their home till late. These are kids. They're precious. They're, they're impressionable. God forbid something happens to that bus. I'm a first responder. I'm going to be there before you. You're not even going to know where the bus is. you got to get up, up to speed and really quick, or this contract is not going to go long if the community has a say in it. Thank you. question I don't know if you're the right audience to address it but how is bus routes optimized like my son it takes him 45 minutes to get uh, from school to home and we live like 10 minutes away from school and he says the ba bus is packed and it goes like all different routes like who's on the bus like it's it's taking a long time like do you have like, any statistics about like how many kids spend on the bus at like 30 plus minutes like what is, what is, how does that work? Well, I, I, I will not try to overstep 
being able to explain something that I cannot because I'm I'm not as familiar with the routes. Um, but but we can certainly get you a route, and I can get a better explanation. Uh, a lot of times it goes by capacity, time, areas. I mean, attendance zones can all impact how long or how how big or how many students are on a particular route. Yeah, but as long as students come first, not like uh, profit of the company comes first, you know, because you can have three buses and like try to squeeze everybody in there yeah. rather than like having like I, a reasonable I can probably time. get a, we can get you an answer yeah. on your particular route um, yeah. if, if we can get yeah, it's bus 20. I'm sorry, bus what? Two zero. Two zero. Yeah. And which school? Uh, Holland uh, Middle School. Holland Middle. School. Yeah. Okay. We'll find out. I, I don't know the route, so I, I would not be able to give you a straight answer. Thanks. Thank you. Hello. Actually, I support the, the previous question because my kids take the same bus and I have the same question. Uh, we live seven minutes maximum away from school and they, the bus stops 40 minutes after, you know. But so the length of bus 20 is route to Holland Middle? Yes. Well, we will take a look. Again, I, I don't have yes, an answer please. right here, but we will find out that route. I, I don't know. Yes, and another question I have, maybe it's not relevant, maybe you're not the people to address this question. What, what happens when somebody shows disrespectful behavior on the bus? One of the kids turns on loudly rap music with speakers, you know, my kids come home deaf. So and when somebody asks him to make it at least softer, he curses on them. So the bus driver says nothing, I understand, because the bus driver is supposed to, to, uh, to drive, you know. Are they homeless should be addressed, you know, yep. too? So f from a discipline standpoint on the bus, um, if you can imagine a, a driver yeah. driving the road and having 20, 30, maybe 40 students behind him. I know. Yes. Um, but their job is to report exactly. issues to the school and then the school, in turn, helps with discipline, whatever that may be. Um, our drivers don't really have the ability to discipline a I student yeah, or the right, but they report it, and we assist them with that too. We we help facilitate that, and then we work on the, the you know with the school administration on that. Can you at least you know let them know the drivers that this yeah. if this situation occurs? Yeah, they we're there to. An we have a full staff that's there to help okay. those drivers. You know with their discipline issues. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Good evening. I'd like to follow up on a previous question, and uh, I haven't really ever heard the answer, whether the there is actually bus route optimization, uh, whether it's done by a person, by software. I, is there such a process? A, a bus optimization? Bus route optimization, yes, because it does take uh, children who live three miles away from school, it takes them about 40 minutes to an hour to get home. Now, add to that the fact that uh, half or more of the days uh, out of the last uh, eight or 10 working days, uh, they've been picked up late from school, between 40 minutes to an hour, and that's, that's a very serious delay. So uh, two things I'd like to know. Why are there specifically delays picking children up from school? Because I can understand when there's a delay in the morning, a child came out late, there's traffic, but what, what's stopping the bus drivers from being at school on time, that's number one. Number two, is there an optimization actually for the, for the bus routes? And I also have a question with respect to the bus drivers. Bob mentioned that uh, Durham has about 110 bus drivers. Are they dedicated to Council Rock? Well, I'll start there. Um, there is 110 bus drivers that are absolutely dedicated to Council Rock. They live here, they work here. Many of them have been doing it here for 20 plus years. That Those are, they, they're Council Rock through and through. Um, we have brought in some additional drivers to assist while we're recruiting to up that number of Council Rock dedicated bus drivers, right? So that's the answer to that. To answer your question on why is a bus late picking up students in the afternoon, it goes right back to that potential that we have to not have enough bus drivers on a given day. If I have, a, you know, I have 110 bus drivers for 108 routes, five of those people call off sick in the afternoon or have a doctor's appointment or whatever, they had a flat tire coming to work 
to have a family emergency, we're, we're short. So then we have to make adjustments and get other drivers to help. Sometimes it's a double back on a route. Sometimes it's saying this bus can take a few of these stops and so on. That's, that's why that happens. So that's why we have brought in additional drivers and we continue to hire. As to the optimization question, I'd have to get into the routes and no specifics, but a lot of times there's, there's so many buses available to a school and we have to get those buses done in a certain time or we have to cover certain areas. I, again, I don't know Council Rock well enough yet as I'm learning um, what the attendant zones are and, and why one bus route may be longer than the other. Sometimes it may mean for us to get students on the right side of the road, we have to go down and come back. I mean, there's all kinds of things that impact how optimal a route is. So who actually said the bus routes? So the, the, the district, the transportation department at the district creates the bus routes with a software called TransFinder. They supply the bus routes to us and we run them. And what we do at the start of the year is we dry run them before school even starts. We do the best we can to get out there and, and run that route with no students and take a look at it, see if there's anything wrong. Then as the school year starts, other things may, may come up. There may be construction. There may be, this takes longer to get down this road than we thought, and then we make adjustments. We may find out that, um, I would guess that any number of routes may have more students routed to them and I don't know this to be a fact, then that bus is capacity because we know and the district knows that certain students aren't going to ride the bus, so we're okay. Well, guess what? There may be new students we don't know about and we routed a route to have 40 kids and all of a sudden we get out there and run it and there's six more kids, so now we have to make adjustments. We do that as fast as we can and to make those routes as optimal as we can. All right, so let me ask you another question. Why did you not have enough drivers at the beginning of the school year if Durham was retained, I believe, in May or before May uh, to, to, to run this, uh, uh, to this school district? Uh, why, why didn't you have enough drivers in the beginning of the school year? Well, I, I, I don't know that I, I, I'll answer that the best I can. We've been constantly recruiting since award of the contract. We immediately started with the incumbent bus drivers that have been serving Council Rock got those people on board and started recruiting day one. The next morning after the, the contract award, we were here in town recruiting. Um, it's not a quick process, and I, I'm not making any excuses, I will tell you that. It's an ongoing process. It takes six, at least six weeks to get a new person certified to be a school bus driver in the state of Pennsylvania from start to finish. It takes. Uh, 14 days minimum that you have to have your learner's permit, as they call it, your permit. That's a federal law. You have to get a physical, a drug screen, a background, fingerprints. Again, we work those as, as fast as we can. We have outside resources from our company here. We have recruiters. Um, we just have to keep recruiting and get those people hired. We, we've been at it nonstop since the day the contract was awarded. When do you anticipate having enough drivers to for the problems to end? I, 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 with our pipeline, um, I, I don't know that I can give you a date, and, 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 it, and I'm not trying to be coy about it, but it's hard for me to say that on the you know, 15th of October I'm going to have enough because, w because we don't know what happens. I mean, we've got a good pipeline. We've got great benefits, as we said. We'll share a flyer with you what we're offering, some of the best in the area. But we may hire two and somebody may retire. You know, I, I don't know about my current workforce. Somebody may have a, a medical issue come up. I, so, so that's our goal, I, I, obviously. And, I'm, you know, I've said it and, and I'm not trying to beat it, but we need to get staffed. And that, that is the key to our performance is having enough bus drivers and we're working hard at it. All right. I, I don't want to monopolize the floor, but I do have one, one or two more questions. The September 29th uh, launch date for the app, is that a hard date or is it possible that it will be pushed back uh, because the app's not ready? I, it's in beta testing now. I'm told it's a, it's a solid day. It will happen on the 29th. All right. Thank you. Yes, sir.
Good evening. My name is Christy Williams. I want to thank you for being here tonight. This can't be an easy thing to come to, and I want to thank the district for actually having this meeting. Um, I think my first question would be, you said that you had 108 routes that you're running for Council Rock. Does that include the routes that you're running for Holy Ghost Prep, um, St. Catherine, Drexel, all the additional schools in the area? Yes, ma'am. That, that's all inclusive, and some of those, as I mentioned, again, I, I'm not the guy to give you the very specifics, but some of those are tiered with mm -hmm. each other, right? So one bus may do two or three of those schools. But yes, that includes all students that are transported through the Council Rock system, I guess I would say. Okay. And then my next question would be, do you prioritize making sure the youngest children are on the bus the least amount of time? or waiting for a bus the least amount of time versus the older children who might have a capacity um, when you know their day ends at four o'clock or 345 and they're not getting home until an hour after that. It's hard to, well, the routes are tiered based on bell, bell times, mm -hmm. right? So it's, um, you know, what has the first bell time is where the route goes first and then the second school bell time and the third school, ho however that, fits with whatever school it is. So I, I don't know that we've ever looked at how we could, I guess what you're saying is, can you get the elementary kids first and make a middle school later? Or I'm not asking for them to be gotten first. I'm asking that the children who have the least capacity or the children who have the most special needs or medical needs those who need to be picked up from school without waiting an hour and 10 minutes um, at the end of the day if what priority is given to them. I don't feel that a special needs child who is six years old should be waiting an hour and 10 minutes after the end of the school day to arrive home. It's a medical issue for him with medications wearing off. It's frankly an issue of safety for your drivers because as his medication wears off, he come, becomes aggressive. So. How is, how is the district and how are you addressing that need to keep everyone safe, not just the kids? Right, right. I, and I would have to look at some specific That's fine. concerns and, and I don't have a problem doing that. I mean, we can maybe talk mm -hmm. afterwards, um, but I certainly understand your point and I'm, I'm sure we can do better at it. I, I, I don't have an answer without knowing the specific instance. Okay, and then my next question would be, the routes that are being run for these additional schools, so for Holy Ghost Prep, for St. Catherine Drexel, if they don't have school a day that we do have school, am I expected to just be hanging around my house for an hour waiting for a shift in bus time when my child's expected in hack at 4.09, but in reality, he really doesn't arrive home until 4.45, except St. Catherine Drexel didn't have school that first the first four days of school that Council Rock had, and he was home 15 minutes before his bus arrival time. So I don't know when he's gonna arrive home within an hour. Now, Michael might be able to help answer that better as he's here, at, you know, he knows those routes better than me. I, I don't know, and I know there's different calendars, you know, a bus may have two to three different school calendars on it, so I understand the problem that can mm -hmm. pose. I'm not sure what we do, but I bet you Michael can tell you. The, the arrival home time should not change whether a school is open or closed, okay? And the drivers know that they have to hit the times. Now, something out of the ordinary happens, the driver is early, they have to wait, okay? Driver's late, sometimes that can't be controlled. But someone else brought it up earlier. There is no five minute window on, on the times. The drivers have to be at the stop at the time, okay? And if they get there early, they will wait. They all know that. Okay, and if a school is closed and your child gets home early, the driver will wait until you are there. That's how it's supposed to work. The now, if you have a specific issue that it happened, it didn't happen on a particular day, we could look at that and find out what happened. You know, I think my concern is more that he's not arriving home by the hack time, which is 409 right, or what, whatever time, the, uh, everyone here is having this similar issue. He's not arriving home by the hack time. We have been told to check hack mul multiple times. So it he's hasn't arriving changed. Home late from the hack time. The first four days of school, right. he was early every day by right. an excessive amount of time, 15 right. minutes, 10 minutes. 
and now we're the other extreme. We're so an as, hour and 10 minutes. Okay, so as we've gotten settled in and as the driver has gotten settled in. No, it was as St. Catherine Drexel went back to school. So it was as that extra tier was added in. Okay. So if the driver's not hitting the time, we need to be aware of that, and then a change has to be made one way or the other. It's not acceptable for your hack time to be 4.09 and the bus to come consistently at 4.15 or 4.17 or 4.20. Oh, that's, that would be a great time. He's coming not, at 4.45. Yeah, but that's not what we're looking for. We're so looking who for do I contact for that? Because I called the transportation number. No one answered my call when I was calling to see where my kid was 35 minutes late. I called the following day. I left another message, and no one's gotten back to me. The only person who's responded is Joe McClay at Holland Elementary School and my son's teacher. They have been incredible. They okay. have been in constant contact with me over this, and they're working their side of it. The, the, the three of us here have handled emails, phone calls. I'm, I'm on the phone with parents two, three, four times before lunch. Uh, Are your emails on Council Rock's website? Well, we're going to get your information when we're done here. Mm -hmm. and, and we will get back to We'll get sorted out before. Okay. And so, so is, there, is there something for special needs kids? Are you prioritizing those children? Or are they really sitting on a bus for an hour when they can't talk and tell you, I've had it, I'm done, I'm going to melt down? We, we prioritize all the children, okay? <laughs> but the, the routes are laid out by the district. We execute the routes as they're laid out by the district. I would imagine your child is set up knowing what his requirements are. So again, it sounds like we're not hitting the time. I don't want to put this on transportation. If your hack time's 409 and, and we're not hitting that, that's got nothing to do with transportation. That's us. We have to look at that. Okay. I emailed questions into Durham today, so you have my information, but I'm happy to give it to you again. Thank you. Just wait one second, we're up against the clock. Um, I heard a lot of same concerns over and over again. So, and I think the gentleman before me already stated this, but he didn't give you a chance to um, respond. So. When you guys signed a contract with the school district, did you were you aware of the application as being part of the requirements for the school district, part of the contract? Yes, I, I can answer that. I, I did. I did. We so did. how do you explain this? How do you, what is part of, I mean, what kind of impression you give us where you knew this was a contract, I download your application, I go to a drop down, and the state is not available. Like, where, where was your IT department? Where was, where was your top management? I mean, coming into this huge contract, million dollar contract, with one of the biggest requirements, obviously being an application, because that's what we're used to, that's what we need to, you know, you, you well aware that you're gonna have problems first couple of weeks with bus routes and being late and, you know, learning the system and everything like that. That application would give us, the parents, opportunity to, monitor the bus to be able to, how do you, how do you explain that? Who, who is the person responsible in your company for the IT department and the CEO and so forth who looked at this contract and didn't communicate out to anybody till way, you know, we had no idea till recently, till, till the first day of school that there was no application. There was an application, but it wasn't even close to being, to working. So can you explain that please? I, I can explain it. I, I take responsibility, and it was a failure. I, I, I mean, I mean, I, I'm not gonna. I, I mean, I mean, there's a failure. Like I understand a failure if there was an application, and it wasn't perfect, right? Like you know, like the previous company wasn't perfect for a while. They worked through it, but you had no application. You had no communication, and that, so that's my first one. And I think that so you basically saying there was just, you guys just. No, decided not to do it or no, no sir okay. as i said in the beginning the support for the application is what we lost the ability to support it and make changes and make it a, a viable solid application as soon as we lost support we started the process of getting a new how did you lose that support i'm sorry how did you lose that support I guess the best way i can say like for not being an it expert mm -hmm. is it became outdated 
and it, it's no longer supported. I think, I, I don't know if you look at your um, phones or computers, again, I, I'm by no means an IT expert. Mm -hmm. at, at some point, things lose um, support and they're, they're no longer function as well. I mean, I, I'm, I don't run an IT company, I, I am an IT person, and you know, from my low level in IT job that I do, I think people like should you know coming into a huge contract like this to not have a project set up, to not have like you know to not have you know what confidence do we have that anything that you say is going to work? If something like this, simple as this, to to you know something that needed to be working for the parents and for you was such a big failure. So that's number one. I mean, I can give you guys pass on the, on the bus drivers because I think everybody understands at this point in time how hard it is to hire people and all that stuff. So that's just, you know, I understand something that you couldn't get done. But that was, but the second thing is, is, I mean, the top management of your company should have been aware of this and there's no way you should have lost support or anything else like that coming into a big contract like that. And the last thing, communications, it's been awful, like absolutely awful. Like, nothing goes out on time. Like, you heard it time and time again, parents repeating the same thing. The communications come out after we need them. Once again, that's your core business. We're not the first school district you're serving, right? No, sir. So, communica so communication should have been something that you know how to do, that you're, sh that you're good at, that I, at the very least, okay, you don't have the bus drivers, you don't have the routes, you don't have you set up your whatever. How come the communications are failing? That should be your core business. That should be something you're good at coming into this. Like, it doesn't matter what phone number it goes out to, right? It doesn't matter that we're a new school district to you. You should have that set up first thing. Like, especially, once again, knowing that you're going to have problems the first couple of weeks, just like first residential had problems first couple of weeks last year, right? So we could live with the problems, possibly, as long as there's improvement. But the f these kind of failures are really set a bad, bad like vibe about your company because it's something that was absolutely shouldn't have been a failure. I, I, yes, sir, and I, and I hear you. And, and, and as far and as communications, I hope what you're saying is going to be true because so far we haven't seen it. Once again, they come out way late. So if I'm standing at the bus stop at 4.17 and I get a communication 4.19 that the bus just left the school, I mean, that didn't do me that much good, right? If I got it like 4.10, I would have been, you know, hanging out at home watching, you know, doing my work <laughs> or whatever, but uh, now I'm just going back and forth and just walking the streets and, you know, waiting a bus. And then also, I think, I mean, I don't, as, as other people have mentioned, I mean, last year, so I believe the school ends at, the Ridge Elementary ends around 3.30. They start packing their stuff, from what I can tell. Uh, I don't know what time they board, 3.40, 3.45. Last year, she got home at 4 o'clock, and, you know, we're five minutes away. Now, the hack time is 4.20. I mean, 40 minutes seems like a really long time. It, once again, it's something, uh, if you don't have the bus drivers, if you have to pack the kids, and this is the only way of doing it, I mean, I understand it, but... If there are solutions, because obviously this is, I'm not the first person having the same issue, if there are solutions such as uh, optimizing the route somehow, it would have been very helpful to not have her sit on the bus for that long. Well, yeah. and, and as I can tell you, we, we are reviewing routes daily collaboratively. Our, I mean, unfortunately, staff, it started at 413 and then became 420 <laughs> for us anyway. So, you know, it's, uh, it, it worked the other way, but, you know. All right. We'll, keep well working I like I said, I really hope that um, going forward, you guys can do your core business better than you, what you have showed. In all honesty, and that that goes. It's not about the bus drivers. It's not about anything like that. It's just about the back end, the the basically support team that you have, and also you know just to improve the communications and obviously make that app work as, as promised. Yes, Thank sir. you. heard about communication we've heard about what Andy's doing with his team what I really haven't heard is what you're doing for communications it seems like the heavy lifting is our on our end when is it acceptable for you to fix that if not yesterday and what is the go-forward plan 
for communications. Well, and, we, and we, I don't want some pie in the sky answer. If you can't answer it realistically tonight, when can Andy expect a, a thought out communication plan on his desk? Because that's what's needed. Tonight, I'm sorry, you guys came with a lot of, not a lot of great answers. And um, we really need to have some really good communication on how that's going to work, what's too late. I listened to the, feasibiz or the, the financial meeting. Um, you know, we need to know, like, within minutes of that bus not making it or that driver not notifying it. But if you listen to those meetings, it's Council Rock bringing ideas to you. You guys are the experts. You should get, be giving us the ideas. So I'm just going to leave you with that thought. I know it wasn't an easy night for you guys tonight, but the reality is it's a multi-million dollar contract, and we need to get ahead of it and we need to get ahead of it quickly, and it all starts with communication. So I really do thank you. I know you've taken a lot of lumps tonight, and I thank the administration. I thank the bus drivers that are doing their work. It's a rough, it's, it's a whole different world out there, but it's all about communication. If we can get ahead of it, the sooner the better, I think it makes a lot of people's lives easier. Thank you. Yes, sir. I, and to answer your question, the communication plan, like I said, that starts tonight for tomorrow morning. We communicate with the district, this is what we know for tomorrow. If we have a substitute bus or whatever that may be. And then it just evolves as the morning goes along. And that's where the addition of the district person can get that information into the district site quicker immediately. I mean, they're sitting, you know, our dispatchers here and somebody calls and says, I, I, I've got a flat tire. Now that hasn't happened, but that's an easy one to imagine, right? I got a flat tire, I'm now gonna be 10 minutes late or until I can get him a replacement bus. That's going from our dispatcher right to the district communication person and they're inputting it immediately into the system so that can go out. No, we started that yesterday. It was our first day yesterday and it's only gonna get better. All right, so that's an ongoing and dispatch is, and anybody can imagine, any number of things can go on. Your drive to work every morning may be the same, but there's days when there's a traffic issue, a truck breaks down in front of you, a, a light's not working, any number of things. And that changes that dispatch as it goes every morning. And those people, the, the district folks are there so we can communicate it to them immediately. And then we kind of regroup after the morning. We figure out where we might have issues. If there's a road blocked off, well, okay, now we know. So what are we going to do to reroute that? That's, that's on the fly what we do every day. Yes, sir. And on Thursday night, you told myself and the board that you had a plan. And Friday, your plan didn't work. 6.01 in the morning, I got an email saying the bus was canceled. I wasn't upset by that. I got a communication at 601. But that email said at 1215, we will let you know if that affects the afternoon. My son is scheduled to be dropped off at 359. I got a communication at 418 saying that there was a bus problem. And tonight, I hear you say, we have a plan. What happened to the plan that you told the board about on Thursday night? because that didn't go into effect on Friday. And you're saying, hey, this new plan went into effect yesterday. Mm -hmm. So which one is it? Did we have a plan that went into effect on Thursday night when we met with the board? Or did you have a plan that went into to last night, tonight, tomorrow? What is the, I think what I need to know is, from the time you know that a driver is out, what are the steps before I get something on my phone saying, hey, there's a problem with the bus? So, so the first step is if we know a driver's out the night before, I'll start there. We cover it with the standby driver. If it happens in the morning, driver's due in at 545 and 545 they call and say I'm not here, well, then we better jump on it. We can do one of two things. If we have a standby driver, a backup driver, we put them on that route and go. If not, if there's a late notification to us, which isn't really acceptable, but that happens, I won't lie, then we may have to say, okay, bus so-and-so, can you help with this route? 
as soon as we start putting those plans together, again, with the district personnel, we can communicate. Okay, bus five is now gonna be 10 minutes late because this happened, we're covering it with this, okay? That's, and uh, it should be as immediate as we know, and it takes you all the way back to the technology I talked about, about our drivers coming to work, clocking in, being on the I got the it, clock, and I, and I and understood all that, so I'm gonna be, be respectful of your time and everyone else's time. But what is the process? You get the information from your driver, you call, you email, you text, we now how, have how does this person, work? We now have a district representative at each of our bus yards. They're the bus yard in Wrightstown and the bus town on State Street. They are sitting side by side with our dispatcher and we tell them bus five is 10 minutes late. And then at they press point, the button to, to let us right know there, that? They're on a computer and they send it out. All right, thank you. So now I know who I need to hold, to hold accountable if there's more late messages. Thank you. Sir. Dr. Sanko. Again, I appreciate the opportunity um, to get here to answer questions, um, part or not. Um, and I, I wish I could answer everyone specifically, but we've taken a lot of information and I know we have some parents to get back to. And I assure you, we work hard every single day to get more drivers and improve what we do. So, so thank you, everybody. So I'd like to thank um, the folks that are here tonight, uh, our board members, our administrative team. I'd like to mostly thank the parents that are here advocating for our kids. And of course, as, as John just said, there are a lot of hard questions and we look forward to continue our work with Durham um, and, and make this right for our community. We know these inconsistencies uh, prevent kids from getting to school when they're supposed to be there and we need them there so that they, we can teach them and they can learn. So uh, with that, again, I will thank you gentlemen for giving your night tonight in our community, both those folks that are here and watching from home. Have a good night, thank you.